Hey, this is Rusty. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to um, basically how to do MIDI routing uh, using an external MIDI device like a keyboard or a, a tone generator or, or some type. Of, in my case, I have a Yamaha Silent Session 2.0 uh, sound module, the DTX Drum Trigger, which actually has really, really good general MIDI tones in it. So um, there was a question on the forum <clears throat> about how to uh, get the sound from uh, from the audio device to show up in the headphones. So, I mean, really there's a lot uh, that gets involved in that when you start talking about the, the actual interface you're using, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, what I'm going to focus on right now is uh, in Studio One itself. Um, I actually have a, um, an, for, for this purpose, for this demo, I'm actually using a Fire Studio Mobile um, because it's very simple and it's got two inputs on the front and then I think four on the back, um, let's see, three, actually eight line inputs on the back, and then it's got uh, the MIDI built in. So uh, I'm going to walk through this uh, really uh, kind of step by step. The first thing I want to talk about is in this particular case, uh, I, I think the user was able to get uh, a MIDI keyboard connected and to play MIDI into from their keyboard. I'm going to step through that uh, really quickly. Um, so obviously the the way to do that is uh, to there's a couple of ways to get there basically uh, you can click on the IO here and then go to options and set up your MIDI for external devices another way to do that is to select all inputs and click configure and that brings them up as well I've got the device configured I'm gonna delete that I'm gonna remove that completely uh, I've also got a FCB 1010 that I was playing with something else so I'm gonna remove that too uh, so if I want to set up a a MIDI keyboard, uh, it's and I, you know, without actually going through and selecting, um, you know, a specific device, I'm just going to select MIDI keyboard, and uh, we'll call this a uh, new MIDI keyboard, and we're going to receive those from the mobile MIDI, and um, we can split the channels or whatever, and I'm just going to, I'm going to leave these alone and hit OK. So now I've got a new MIDI keyboard here, so it's not actually connected, but. I could very well connect uh, my, I've got a MIDI controller, I could connect that and run that into the input of the of the Fire Studio Mobile, uh, which is what this mobile MIDI is, and I would be able to play sounds into the device. Uh, I, I don't have that hooked up now, um, but at any rate, I think that's pretty straightforward. Where we run into, problem is tr into a problem is trying to output sounds back to that keyboard and use the sounds on the keyboard and play them into Studio One. So uh, that's really what I'm going to focus on during this tutorial. So to start with, I'm going to I'm going to click Add again, and this time I'm going to choose New New Instrument. And the reason for that is because this is ex exactly what this is. You have to think of this physical instrument the same way you would think of it as a as a virtual instrument in the software. So now we're creating a physical instrument. And we'll call this instrument uh, MIDI out, um, just simply because that's what, what I think it was called in the specific case of the question. But you could call this anything. Uh, in fact, let me let me just do that. Let me call it Yamaha um, DTX. And so I'm going to receive. I'm sorry. I'm going to send um, the MIDI signal to mobile MIDI because that's where this is connected. And I'm going to send all channels. So I want to be able to send all channels to this device, to the Yamaha DTX, uh, for our, our MIDI sounds. We'll go ahead and send our MIDI clock code, our um, our source, and our time code. And then we'll hit OK, and that'll show up there. Now that we've got our instrument, our physical instrument set up, we'll hit OK. And you'll look in this section here for the instrument output. We now have the Yamaha DTX show up as an output setting. For inputs, we can choose our new keyboard or any other input device that we have set up. So this is really key right here. So I'm going to go to the DTX right now, and I'm going to play one of the built-in songs, So just so you'll see the input coming in here. So I'm going to... So you see I've got this connected to mic one input of my device via uh, basically a guitar patch cable. So I'm coming from the output of the silent session the audio output, the sound output, like um, I've got a couple, several outputs on here. So I'm coming out from the mono left into the mic one of my Fire Studio Mobile, into the mic pre. 
So you can see my one when I hit play, I've got signal coming in. And I can hear that signal as well. So that signal is actually coming in through my headphones. And so I've, that's how I'm monitoring, actually. I'm monitoring through my headphones. So um, if I expand this a little bit, you'll see I'm not using the built-in uh, zero latency monitoring. Um, I can uh, just, uh, I can turn that on and, and do all that funky routing and stuff. But for the purposes of my studio, I really don't need that. Um, so I'm basically, my headphones are set up to monitor whatever the main signal is. Uh, and I think you do that through universal control and everything's different. So I don't know um, if, if it would, you know, benefit this tutorial at all to try to set that up. So I'm not even going to bother. It's a completely different animal. Um, but the main thing that I want to point out here is that uh, we've got input coming in on mic one. So that said, we've got a couple of ways we can do this. So we it can route all of this. This is just a simple kind of a keyboard song that I've got here. And, and um, you can play it through either the local MIDI VSTI, which I'm going to use presence in this case because it's built in. Uh, so we'll choose presence. And when I play this audio, you will hear it in presence of SCI play. And you'll see that we've got the presence volume control here. So you'll see audio here. So, so while this is playing, you can see that we've got this input coming in on the instrument. It's also showing up here in this area. So in essence, we're using the internal VSTI. Now I'm going to switch. I'm going to start playing this and I'm going to switch to our external and you will see when I make this change here that audio will start coming in on input one and the audio will go away on the presence. So let's, let's do this. So now here's here's where it gets interesting. Okay, so that's good. So if, if I wanna if I wanna actually record this track, I need to create a new audio track. And I'm gonna set my input to input one, which is mic one, which corresponds to this input here. And I'll enable that to record. Now let's just hit play. And you'll see we've got our input coming in here. Now we've got a little bit of a latency thing going on. So I'm going to disable that so I won't hear this input. But that's okay. I can just as easily do it. You can hear the latency. It's very it's slight. I think I'm running at 256. Yeah, I'm actually running at the buffer size of 256. So if I wanted to just hit record on this, let's go back and I'll record a few minutes, a few seconds of this. Now we got that, let's mute this and we'll play back our audio we just recorded. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I, I think I covered everything. If I missed something, um, uh, yeah, just shoot me a, a a quick, you know, PM on the on the Personas forums. My username there is RLWMMW, or um, hit me here on YouTube, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with uh, with an answer. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.